This is a 3D printed Peacekeeper from Black Ops 2. And today I'm hand painting it to make it look exactly like it was when it was the first ever DLC weapon in Call of Duty history. And after it's done on the 3D printer, we have a few spots that we need to fix. You can see here that there's some prints that kind of broke and we had to mend them and it's just made the surface not super great. So to fix that, we're gonna do three things. The first is we are gonna use Bondo, and this is generally used for cars, and this is what you would put like in a deep key scratch on your car. However, it works great for 3D printing. You can use this if you want it across the whole surface, and sometimes I do, but I generally do it in these really bad problem spots. So we put it on the surface. In this case, we needed some really hard edges. So I really just packed this on there, and then I used a hard edge this is a bondo branded spreader but you can use any type of spreader or even like an old credit card and then i basically sculpted the shape out of the bondo on top of the surface and i made sure to make it higher than the rest of the surface this way when we sand it it will sand down and we can get it absolutely flat now once that's dry we are going to do exactly that and we are going to sand it we're going to sand it flat and then we're going to also sand the rest of the surface to start to get rid of some of those layer lines. Once things are feeling pretty good, then we are gonna use this sandable and filler primer. This is automotive primer. I use it in most all of my videos. It's a Rust-Oleum product and it is super, super good. If you just have fine layer lines, just spray this on after a quick sand and you are pretty much good to go. And that's exactly what we did. We sprayed it on, then we did a quick sand after, and then it is time to put a base coat of paint and for the peacekeeper it is a special type of weapon where it almost feels like it's a couple of different weapons merged into one and so it gives us some interesting textures to work off of so half of the gun looks like bare metal or rusted kind of metal like the transit bus and then on the other side it's more of like a painted surface but it's all pretty worn and weathered and so that's what we're gonna do for the metal parts we want to start with a black base coat and you can go with a gloss or a matte for me I like the matte. I think that the paint just goes on way nicer after. If you were going to spray just straight up silver over it, I would go with the gloss black. It tends to just work a little bit better. However, we are going to be painting over this, so you're going to go with the matte. Then in this case, because the majority of the rest of the gun, the painted areas, it has a lot of white, we wanted to do a white base coat. And I used again, a matte white for this. And then use your discretion on whatever camo or whatever you're painting um, to try to match what the most you're going to use, right? Like, so in this case, we are mostly white so i use the white a lot of times you can save some time doing that once those dry it's time to get into my setup and we get into the details and this one was super fun and i have a few special techniques i'm gonna go over that i use let's get into it the first place we are gonna start is on the magazine and the, the reason why i do this is because it's a smaller piece and it's an easy piece to start over if for whatever reason we screw up and we need to start over. So we go on the mag and this is one of the bare metal parts and the absolute best product I've used to get that dry brush, that, that extra metal feel, all of that stuff is this stuff called gilding wax. It's also known as rub and buff. Um, however, the one I bought is gilding wax. The other product you're gonna wanna use is a very, very crappy brush. So in this case i bought uh this six pack of like glue brushes from michael's they have super super stiff bristles and that is what you want when you are dry brushing you want something that is not going to just get into all the grooves you want just a nice hard bristle surface that you can just lightly brush over stuff and it's perfect with the gilding wax. So once we have our product and we have our paint and everything ready, I take a little bit of golden gilding wax. I take a little bit of gilding wax, a little bit goes a very, very long way. So just use a little at a time. I just dab a little bit out of my palette and then I wipe it off onto uh, a paper towel. I just want a very, very small amount on the brush and then we get to brushing. And I focus here mainly on the edges, sometimes just like in the middle, in some places, just have some fun with it, feel it out. But again, 
keep your brush strokes just really, really light and just feel out how the product works. You can add some more paint if you want, but start with as little as possible and just start on those edges. You're gonna be, you're gonna do a great job uh, and it looks fantastic. Now, after I've done a bunch of that brushing, I feel like it always needs just some other colors. Just straight silver doesn't do it for me. So I went in with some brown and this is just normal brown acrylic paint that I use. And then we're gonna use the same technique, just a little bit of paint on the brush uh, and brush that into some different areas. And it just helps add some depth to the piece. And then the last thing that we're going to do on this mag is we are going to do a black wash. And I'm going to tell you more about that at the end of the video. So stay tuned. After the black wash, we move on to the larger piece that is supposed to be bare metal. And we use the same steps, the wax, the brown. And then I also added some gray acrylic and just have fun with it. This is a large area and uh, I had a ton of fun. Uh, I think it just like the transformation from just straight black to the rusted out metal and all that stuff, I think is just super satisfying to watch. So hopefully you also get the same enjoyment out of it. Once I'm kind of to a place that I like with this, I then also paint in a little bit of white and I use not a straight up white. This is a off white, a very light gray, if you will. And I just put this on a few spots that need to be there like it is in game. Next up is the parts that we started with the white base coat. And there is some parts of these pieces uh, that do have some of that metal feeling as well. So the first thing that we're going to do is paint those spots black. We got to give that its black undercoat before we do anything else, just in case we screw up or get some black paint somewhere else that we need to start. Over. We don't want to be messing up any of our details that we're about to do. So black paint first, let that dry. And then I go in with the details. And the first thing I do is I sketch it out. And in this case, there was some like very straight lines I needed to get. So I actually brought out a ruler uh, and sketched that out and then painted in the blue, painted in all of the little details that we needed to. And uh, it was looking pretty good. Once those details are dry, now we have a very clean white surface and we need to dirty that up. So we do most of the same techniques that we were using before. However, I focus a little bit more on the brown and the gray here, just because the silver doesn't show up super well on the white and those other colors just do a better job. Once I'm happy with how it feels in terms of the weathering, it's time to bring out our secret weapon, the black wash that I was talking about earlier. This is how we are making our black wash today. Now we're going to start with just a little plastic bottle here okay and i have this filled halfway with distilled water you can use tap water if you want but if you have really hard water i would probably advise to go just get some distilled water or even like bottled water something like that that's our first ingredient second ingredient we have is matte medium okay so this is essentially just paint without pigment okay so you paint this on, you can use this as like a base coat. If you have, if you have an item like a skate deck or something like that, you can paint this on the surface first and this will kind of act like a primer. But in this case, we're going to be adding it to this water and this is going to basically thin the water or thin this medium down. But the matte medium is going to make it so that when our mixture here dries on the surface, it's going to be a matte finish and not shiny. The third ingredient is going to be a flow aid. OK, so this is a lot of times used for airbrushing and stuff like that. And basically, you just add it to paint to make it just a little bit more slick. And, uh, you know, for airbrushing, just helps get through the uh, through the process a little bit. So that's the next item. The last ingredient here, guys, is going to be two things. We are going to have acrylic ink, okay? And you can do just black if you want. But this is actually a tip I picked up from another YouTuber called Black Magic Craft. And he adds a little bit of brown ink into his black wash. And it just helps give it a little bit more character so it's not just straight up black okay but we are going to be using mostly black in this you can find this just at like michael's or like any craft store and i'll, I'll put some affiliate links in the description as well that's what it looks like i'm going with carbon black and then this is transparent burnt sienna so i'm just going to put a little bit of this one in the mixture here's what, here's what we're going to do so start off halfway up okay halfway up then we're going to put about an equal amount 
of the map medium in there as well. All right, we're just gonna shake this up a little bit and then we're gonna just start adding some of this in here, okay? Like I said, you wanna do about a one-to-one -one ratio. You know, there's not really an exact science to this stuff. We put about half and half there. We're gonna see how that goes. If you want it to be a little bit thicker, add more of this. If you want it to be thinner, add less. Then we're gonna add uh, a little bit of the flow additive. Probably do like a one to like 10 ratio. Just a little, a, a little touch. You don't need a ton of this stuff. Then we're gonna put this lid back on here. Then we're gonna shake this up. You got like a creamy, milky looking texture here now that we got that mixed up now we add the ink okay so we're gonna do way more black than uh than the burnt sienna but we are gonna start off here with the black we'll do just like a couple of uh you know things full of the black and then we'll do like a half of a squeezy full of the brown okay shake it up there you go you got a nice black wash it's gonna take a little of this paint so you can see kind of the consistency here so it's very thin very very thin and that's exactly what you want that was a clip from my kick live stream where i paint most of these projects live and hang out with the community it's a blast so be sure to check us out over there sometime there will be a link in the bio but now let's talk about applying the black wash and what i like to do is just dump a whole bunch onto the surface and then use a foam brush to just spread it all out all over the surface. And this is just something that the more you use it, the more you'll understand how it works. But the way I like to use it is I like to spread it out everywhere or wherever I want it to be. And then I just let it dry for a few seconds, maybe up to 30 seconds, depending on how extreme I want this to be. And then I go back in with either a sponge or a paper towel, and then I just start dabbing it off or wiping it off. However, the effect I want it to be in this case, I'm dabbing it off and it looks amazing. It just dyes the surface a little bit. It just leaves some residue and then it gets some black into all of those nooks and crannies and it just helps contrast everything up so once i do this to every piece we are left with this and i absolutely love the way this thing turned out black ops 2 is one of my favorite call of duty games of all time and the peacekeeper is iconic and i think it turned out freaking sweet so let me know in the comments what you think i should paint next be sure to hit that sub button and hit that like button we'll see you in the next one